Welcome, everybody. It's great to be together this cold and snowy Wednesday night in the middle of Advent in the year of our Lord 2020. A very strange and bizarre and difficult year for most of us, but also in so many ways a, a year of, of wonder and a year of miracles. So we hold on to that. We hold on to the, the promise that God is with us and that God is always with us, even in the mess and the struggle, even in the challenges of each day, our God is with us. And that God who is with us has come to us in the form of a child, a vulnerable child, and that coming is what we mark this Advent Wednesday for our Vesper service. And so please follow along with Lee as she leads us in our call to worship. Hey everybody, on mute, read out loud. In holy wonder with divine expectation, we echo the mother of God, reciting her poetry of freedom. God's mercy extends from generation to generation. God scatters the proud and lifts high the humble. God's promises to the hungry, the captive, and the weary will be fulfilled. A testimony to persistent hope, we join the whole world in waiting. Our spirits rejoice. The time is nearly here. The little town of Bethlehem. First reflection on scripture this evening is from Amy. The scripture is from Luke 1, verses 41 through 45. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. After George Floyd's life was taken this summer, I joined a group of Asian American women to confront our own anti-blackness and decolonize theology over six weeks of study. Our promise in this learning cohort was to courageously initiate greater justice, greater liberation, and deeper truth-telling in our communities. We were strengthened by Luke's gospel of the Holy Spirit's presence at home and in collaboration with women. In Luke's birth narrative, there are parallel stories of God's announcement of the births of John the Baptist and Jesus. An angel of the Lord interrupts Zechariah in his priestly rites within a temple sanctuary to deliver the news that his aging and barren wife, Elizabeth, will give birth to John the Baptist. Zechariah, the expected vessel of God's message, responds with disbelief in the announcement and is made mute. In contrast, Elizabeth interprets her miraculous pregnancy as a gift from God proclaiming blessings. Gabriel appears to Mary a girl of no status and living in Nazareth, a place of no regard, to announce the birth of Jesus. Mary receives this news by describing herself as God's servant, 
both submitting to God's purpose and also embracing her role to assist that purpose. Mary goes to Elizabeth, whose greeting causes Elizabeth's child to leap in her womb. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth affirms God's plan by blessing the coming of her Lord Jesus, and also Mary, as a recipient of divine fortune because of her faith in God's promises. In this scripture, I find hope that in the kingdom of Jesus, those on society's margins are actually the center of the story, empowered by the Holy Spirit to serve and act in collaboration with God's plan. I am hopeful in how divine presence is not just in the temple, but in the home. Gender, title, education, and wealth are not what give you authority in this new household. And sometimes, God makes mute those who are to listen and make space. Most of all, I find hope in the joy of coming together in faith to Jesus, just as Elizabeth and Mary did. Will you pray with me? Dear God, in a time of anxiety, instability, and division, may we be united by hope in your miraculous blessings and promise of salvation to all who come in faith to Jesus, no matter their position. Empower us in joy and solidarity as we promise to hear and enact the words of Jesus within our communities. Amen. And thank you, Amy. For Christ is born of Mary. Rosangela will now bring us our second reflection on scripture. I read from Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubt. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority, in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Sometimes it is good to hear a voice that say, that say things with authority. Jesus was not bothered by the disciples' doubts of the events of that moment. With a great authority, Jesus said, go, I have your back. The source of his command was the promise that I am with you always to the end of the age. That is how the Gospel of Matthew concluded the story of Jesus, the one that started it as an account of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah. It certainly was a very comforting promise that would help the disciples to keep the community together after what happened to Jesus. Besides, the promise does not expire. It's up to the end of the age. Timeless, what a great gift to carry on while making disciples and opening the circle for newcomers. Every year, I recognize the beginning of the Advent season by the flowers of my Christmas cactus. They are blooming now. But this year, 
I have the feeling that the Advent season is starting much, much earlier. It starts in March, when I found myself, in, myself hold, holding on to God's promise, Emmanuel, God with us, in the midst of the fear and uncertainty caused by the COVID-19. This is the promise that I would tell myself and offer to others this last month, month of the pandemic. Now I realize that the most effective way we have to prevent the spread of COVID-19 relies on how we deal with the promise of presence. Physically or socially distant, isolated but connected, wear a mask to protect yourself and others, unmute yourself. Those are examples of the new vocabulary we acquired over this year. They reflect our effort to make our presence less of a threat to each other and offer an assurance that we are getting through this together. Certainly, we are not alone in the journey. I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the promise to hold on to and to offer. Will you pray with me? God, thanks for your promise of presence. We can't do it all by ourselves. We need you and we need each other. Guide us in the way of love and care, celebrating the life of the child born Jesus. This is our hope. Amen. And final reflection on scripture is brought to us this evening by King Herod, um, otherwise known as Micah. <laughs> uh, let us read from John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to, play, to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may all be also. Okay. In John 14, one through three, Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled and I will come again and will take you to myself. I am so touched by this passage and these two particular parts of it. Hope and the sense of promise can be so hard to come by. And right here we have both. Jesus is so gentle and comforting and he promises to come back and take us to him to be with him. I struggle so with a troubled heart. I harbor anger, resentment, worry, irritation. All of these things could be soothed if I went to Jesus, to be with him and to know that he has my six. Why don't I? Is it because I fear there is no place for me with Jesus, that he will not care enough to address these concerns? It says in the scripture that in God's house, there are many dwelling places. There then, there then must be a place for me also for my fears and resentments. Jesus gives us a promise, wonderful in its sassiness. If 
If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Well, no, is all I can say. If Jesus says it's so, then it is so. Please pray with me. Jesus, God, my friend and savior, I come to you in the promise that you have made a place for me and will lift up the troubles, lift the troubles of my heart and soul. I thank you for this promise and pray every day to be at your side in the place you have prepared, especially for me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Micah. Love came down at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sign. Jenna, will you pray for us this evening? Yes. Please join me in the evening prayer. Emmanuel, God with us. You have been with us on our journeys since before we even began them. You walked with our spiritual ancestors before us. And you will continue to guide others long after we are gone. God, you have made promises to us that if we leave our homelands, you will be with us and bless us. That if we speak your words, others will listen and change their ways. That if we stand up to our oppressors, that you will stand with us. That if we follow you, you will give us new life. You also promise to come be with us, to be Emmanuel, God with us, that in Jesus we could follow your way and see your vision for the world where love and justice reign. God, you have fulfilled all these promises and more. We have never been apart from you, even when it felt like it. You continue to guide us, to abide with us, and to love us even while we are flawed. Help us to take part in these promises. Empower us to work with you to fulfill your vision of a world where the blind receive sight, the poor good news, the prisoners are released, and the oppressed are liberated. Help us to collaborate with you in these promises, to be your hands and feet in a broken and needy world, to be your followers, to guide others towards your love. Emmanuel, help us fulfill the promises of your love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jenna. And now, if you're not already in gallery view and you can have that capability, then I encourage you to go there. And either way, I invite you to raise your hand in blessing, but not blessing some vague 
presence out there, but go to the, the sides of your frame and put your palms out and so that we can kind of touch each other in this weird and virtual way that we're becoming a little too accustomed to, I, I should think. And now, now and forever, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of virtual witnesses, let us set aside every burden, all the troubles that weigh us down, and let each of us run with perseverance the race set before us, looking to Christ, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Be well, be safe. I encourage you to stay on if you've got a few more minutes and uh, Lee will be with you. We're going to record some music over here for Sunday. <laughs> Bless you. Take care.